In the previous project for this Getting Started guide, we used the lighting pipe symbols to create lighting positions. For this project, we'll use an alternative method called the Lighting Pipe tool to create lighting positions. Once we do this, we'll use the Instrument Summary tool to create a symbol for our lighting plot. This time, instead of going through each document setting, we'll just use the attached exercise file. Download or copy this file to your desktop. In Vectorworks, go to File, Open. Then select the exercise file from your desktop and click the Open button. Once you open the file, you should see that the units are set to millimeters and the drawing is zoomed to the front of the stage and the seating area. We're going to create a curved lighting position above the seating area with a few lighting devices. To begin, select the 2D Locus tool from the basic palette. Then, click near the far left set of stairs in the sixth row from the front. Next, select the Mirror tool in the basic palette. Also, choose the second mode in the toolbar called Duplicate Mode. Now, click anywhere along the vertical line at the center of the drawing. Then, move your cursor downward along this same line, and click again to create the mirror axis and duplicate 3D locus on the right side of the seating area. We'll use these locus points as guides to create the curved lighting position. Next, select the Lighting Pipe tool from the Spotlight Toolset palette. Also, Select the fifth mode in the toolbar, Point on Arc Mode. Click these three points, and double-click the last point to complete the curve and create the lighting pipe. By default, the lighting pipe is placed at zero on the layer plane. To elevate the lighting pipe, set the Z field to 7925 millimeters and press Enter. Additionally, change the position name field to second FOH. We can now convert this lighting pipe into a lighting position. With the lighting pipe still selected, go to Spotlight, Object Conversion, Convert to Light Position. Notice in the Object Info palette that this object is now a light position. Also, the Z height and position names fields are set to the data we input earlier. Additionally, you should now see the position name displayed in the drawing area by the lighting position. Let's make this label a little more legible. Go to Text, Size, 24 to increase the label's font size. Next, we'll add lights to our newly created light position. To do this, go to the Resource Browser and the Home icon to view the resources for your current document. Then, double-click the symbol ETC Source 4 19 degrees to activate the Lighting Instrument tool. Now. Click the left side of the light position by the locus point. Rotate the light toward the stage as shown here. Then, click again to set the lighting device. Repeat these steps to place four more lights along the light position as shown here. To create the remaining lights, press X to switch to the selection tool. Then hold the shift key and click on each lighting device until they are all highlighted. In the basic palette, select the Mirror tool and verify that the second mode, Duplicate Mode, is activated. Just as we did previously, click anywhere along the vertical line at the center of the drawing. Then move your cursor down this line. Click again to set the Mirror Axis line and create the remaining lights. Now we need to add data to these lights. Notice the lights have been placed in pairs. In each pair, the lights on the left will have the same channel and color. Instead of inputting the same data multiple times, we'll create the data for one pair of lights. Switch to the Selection tool and select the leftmost lighting device and set the Channel field to 21, the Color field to R65, and the Purpose field to Area A Front Cool. Then, select the light just to the right of the currently selected light. This time, set the channel field to 41, the color field to R33, and the purpose field to Area A Front Warm. Now, we can just transfer the data from these two lights to the remaining lights. 
To do this, select the eyedropper tool in the basic palette and click the Preferences button in the toolbar. In the eyedropper preferences dialog box, check the option Plugin Parameter in the Other section and click OK. This option will allow you to transfer the data we just entered for the lights. Now, click the leftmost lighting device. Notice the cursor is an eyedropper, meaning the tool is in Pickup Attributes mode. We've picked up the parameters from this light and need to transfer it to the left light in the remaining pairs. To do this, hold the Option key on Macintosh or Control on Windows to change the tool to Apply Attributes mode. Now, click the left light in each of the remaining pairs of lights as shown here. Release the Option or Control key to switch back to Pick Up Attributes mode and click the right light from the leftmost pair. Once again, hold the Option key on a Mac or the Control key on Windows and click the right light in the remaining pairs of lights. There, now each pair of lights has the same data. However, there is one parameter that will be slightly different, the purpose field. Switch the selection tool and change the area letter in the purpose field for each of the sets of lights as shown here. Next, let's use the Number Instruments command to add the channel number to these lights quickly. To do this, go to Spotlight, Number Instruments. In the dialog box, choose Channel from the Field Name menu and set the Start Number field to 21. Then click OK. As the resulting dialog box reveals, we're going to click each light in the order we want them numbered. So, click the lights in the same order as shown here. Then, click an empty space to see the numbering. We need to do this one more time for the right lights in the pair. Go to Spotlight, Number Instruments. This time, set the Start field to 41 and click OK. Click OK to the resulting dialog box and click the remaining lights in the same order as shown here. Don't forget to click in a blank area to stop the numbering. Now, if you were to select these instruments individually, you would see the channel numbers are in sequential order based on the order in which we selected the lights. We finished entering data for these lights. Now we need to focus them. With the selection tool, select the lights from the leftmost pair. Then, right click one of the selected lights, select Focus Instruments, and choose A from the list of focus points. Then, Click OK. These lights are focused on the focus point labeled A. Now do the same for the remaining pairs, but choose the focus point that corresponds to the light's area that we previously set in the purpose field. OK, our light plot is complete. The next step is to create a symbol key for the lighting devices in the drawing. In the Spotlight tool set, select the Instrument Summary tool. Now, pan to the left portion of the light plot and place the instrument summary at your desired location. At the moment, there is no summary shown. To fix this, click the Build List button in the Object Info palette. Since we want to create a symbol key showing the lights in the drawing, make sure the option Use Instrument Symbols is selected. Then, click the column header Device Type to sort by this category. If you scroll down the list, you should see all the lights in one section. Hold the Shift key and select the first and last lights in the list of lights to select them all. Then click this arrow to add the lights to the instrument summary. Now let's add some other visual elements to the instrument summary. Select Other Elements from the Available Components section. Then choose Column Header from the list and click the single arrow pointing to the right to add it to the instrument summary. The header is placed at the bottom of the list, but we want the header to show at the top, so click and drag the column header to the top of the list. Next, choose Full Divider from the Components list on the left, and click the arrow to add it to the instrument key on the right. 
click and drag the full divider element in the component list on the right so that it sits directly above the column header. Finally, select the header from the component list on the left and click the arrow to add it to the instrument summary. Drag this element so that it's between the header column and the full divider. Now, select the header and click the Options button in the bottom right corner of this dialog box. In the resulting dialog box, type Instruments and click OK twice to return to the drawing area. Notice the instrument summary now shows all the lights in the document and it also has the divider and header that we set up. Now, let's add a title to this summary. First, in the Object Info palette, check the option Show Title. Then, in the text field below, input Symbol Key and press Enter. Set the Position drop-down menu to Below. Also, set the Size drop-down menu to 28, and set the Style menu to Bold. Last, we'll check the text for the column header. In the Object Info palette, set the Section Align drop-down menu to Center, and the Size drop-down menu to 20. There. Now reposition your instrument summary if necessary, and you're done.